Standby low res on the Canon R5 is a great, great little tool. Let's make sure you're optimizing it and using it the right way. There's no doubt that standby low res on the Canon R5 is one of those tools that, in my opinion, really helped unlock so much potential in the Canon R5 because it so greatly reduced the overheating issues that you have in video mode on the Canon R5. If you are using uh, Canon R5, I highly recommend you go and check out standby low res. Now, I did do an earlier video on standby low res. It's much, much more detailed. I'll leave a link for it right up here. But Go check that out just to get the basis of standby low res. Now, based on that video though, I've had a lot of you out there asking me questions about standby low res and where you can, how you can use it, and little details about that. So what I thought I'd do is I'd make a short video detailing what you can do and when you should use standby low res more importantly. Because it doesn't, it's not always universal. There's some places where you want it, some places you might not want, and that's important. Now, one side note on this as well. If you're using a Canon R5 and shooting in standard 4K, if you don't want 4K HQ, if you don't want 4K 60, if you're not interested in 8K, don't worry about standby low res. Standard 4K recording in 24 or 30 frames a second on the Canon R5 will not overheat. It's very, very important for you to know. There's no need for you to do any kind of special things. Standard 4K on the Canon R5 will not overheat. You really only need to use this standby low res if you wanna get 4K HQ, 4K60, and some of those more problematic frames and recording options that tend to overheat on the Canon R5. Okay, now that we said that, let's go into standby low res and some notes on it on what you should do. Now, just a quick overview if you don't know what standby low res is. Essentially, what that does is the Canon R5 on your back screen when you're not recording internally shows you a lower resolution version of your scene. And this is fantastic because it greatly reduces the heat load on your camera. It means when you're not recording, you're not eating up that precious overheat time that you have on a Canon R5. It so dramatically increases the amount of time you can record with your R5 in overheating that it's almost like having a different camera in my opinion. I love it and it is great. What I wanna to talk today is when you should use standby low res and notes on how to use it. Now, the first note I'm gonna do if you are doing internal recording. Now, internal recording, if you're doing 4K HQ, 4K 60, anything like that, go ahead and cut standby low res on. This will greatly, greatly increase the overheat times on your Canon R5 in basically all those modes that are problematic. Now, the great thing about standby low res, if you are recording internally, is if you hit record, the second you hit the record button, the camera will instantly switch to the highest res mode that you're recording in. So standby low res only affects your camera when you are not recording. It's basically a standby mode. The second you hit record, you'll instantly hit a higher resolution. And I'll put a test up here where you can see what happens when you hit record. You can see that instant quality change, which is great. So internal recording, it is fantastic. Make sure you have standby low res on if you want 4K HQ, 4K 60, things like that. External recording is a little bit different. And you gotta think about what you wanna do with external recording. Now, if you are a raw recorder, and you're recording raw through the HDMI up to an Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus, here's the good news. Cut on standby low res. And the good news is standby low res does not affect the raw signal going through the HDMI up to your camera. What this means is you get essentially unlimited raw recording from the Canon R5 if you have standby low res on. It will never overheat in raw recording to an external recorder, which is awesome. If you love raw, if you want to record in raw, then this is something you're going to want to maximize all the way. However, there are a lot of you out there that are using an external recorder, but you don't want to record in raw. You want to record in ProRes. You want to record 4K HQ to re external recorder, which is what I do a lot. And this is where standby low res gets a little more tricky. If you are shooting in a non-raw recording mode to an external recorder, here's what you need to know about standby low res. And you need to be careful how you record. First one is this. If you're recording to both an external recorder and you're recording internally, both at the same time, make sure you keep standby low res on. And what's great about this is greatly increases the time your camera will go, it will not overheat. And at that point, anytime you hit record, the signal going up to HDMI signal will get crisp too. 
and you will get a great signal. So if you're doing both internal and external recording at the same time, I would recommend keeping standby low res on to get that maximum 4K HQ, 4K 60, things like that. However, this is a big one. If you are using an external recorder and not recording internally on the Canon R5, I would recommend do not turn on standby low res. And the reason for this, if you are recording in a non-RAW format, the camera will not know to switch off standby low res through the HDMI. And that means you're gonna get a lower resolution that you want. Now, that's not necessarily a terrible thing if you forget to do it because you're essentially just recording standard 4K through that switch up to your external recorder. But if you wanna get that 4K HQ, if you wanna get that 4K 60 at its best quality, you need to make sure that you don't have standby low res on because if you're not hitting record internally, the camera won't know to switch out of that standby low res mode. Very, very important to know if you are recording external sources only. I've had a lot of you ask questions about that and I think it's very, very important for you to know that. Anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. This is an incredible tool that I recommend all of you really learn how to maximize for your Canon R5. But just remember, you can't use it all the time. Like I said, if you're an external recorder only, not internal, you need to be careful and not get hurt when you come back in the room later. That being said, all other ways, I would highly, highly recommend using the standby low res because of how much it expands the range of your Canon R5. All right, guys, that's pretty much what I have to say. I hope that was helpful. Leave me any notes or comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, go out there, keep on shooting. But yeah, I'll talk to you soon.